Welcome to our lecture online. One of the most challenging tasks in astronomy is determining distances to stars, to nebulas, to other galaxies. So what methods do we have and how far are they good for? In other words, how far an object can we determine the distance of with specific methods? So some of these that we have on the board are of course not good for finding distances to galaxies because they're too far away, but let's go through all the various types of means in which we can determine the distance. For example, we could use laser or radar to find distances, for example, between here and the moon or between here and an asteroid or something like that, but those methods usually are limited to something of the order of one astronomical unit. Anything farther than that, it becomes an impractical method. Stellar parallax can be used for stars within about 60 light years. Now with some of our telescopes we can go beyond 60 light years, but again it's limited to just stars in our own general region of the galaxy right here. Stars on the other end of the galaxy could no longer be measured by the sterile stellar parallax because we simply cannot measure those tiny angles. Spectrosco spectroscopic parallax, it's kind of hard to uh, pronounce that word, spectroscopic parallax, is not really a method of parallax, it's using the HR diag diagram and the various colors and star types that we can look at. We can determine the intrinsic brightness of these stars by looking at their colors using filters and then we can measure the apparent brightness and from that we can calculate the distance. That's a method that's good to about 30,000 light years, but again, only for stars within our own galaxy. We cannot look at stars at other galaxies and use this particular method. They're just too far away and we can determine their color that way. But beyond that, if we start looking at other galaxies in the, in the region, out to about 50 million light years, we can use what we call Cepheid variables, the variable stars that have a changing intensity in very periodic methods, typically between one day and 100 days. And so by simply looking at their periodicity, we can determine their intrinsic brightness, then measure their apparent brightness, and from that figure out the distance to those stars. If we can pick out a dozen or so stars in a particular galaxy, by averaging out the results of about a dozen Cepheid variables, we can determine the distance to those galaxies. So for a great number of galaxies within 50 million light years, we can determine the distance to those galaxies by simply measuring the periodicity of the Cepheid variables. The next method that we have available to us is the Thule-Fisher method. Now that's not an exact method, but it's actually not a bad method. We discovered that the rate of rotation has a lot to do with the size of the galaxy. So if we can measure how fast a galaxy rotates, we can infer from that the size of the galaxy. A size typically has an intrinsic brightness relative to the size, and then we measure the apparent brightness of the galaxy. And by making the calculation, we have a fairly good means of finding the distance to galaxies out to about 500 million light years, so beyond the capability of working with Cepheid variables. The next method that we have is what we call the Type 1a supernova. The intensity or the absolute magnitude of a Type 1a supernova is about minus 19. And since all of them have about the same brightness when they explode, all we have to do is measure their brightness. We watch the curve increase of the light intensity curve. Then we watch the decrease. We catch it at the very top. We watch it night after night. And then we compare that to the uh, brightness, the apparent brightness, and from that we should be able to then uh, measure, actually let me turn that around, we measure the apparent brightness, we know the absolute brightness at the peak, we compare the two, and from that we can figure out the distance. And finally we of course have the Hubble law, which is good for any distance within the visible universe. Simply the universe is expanding at a particular rate, now trying to find the accurate value for the Hubble constant, that's still in progress, that's a very difficult thing to do, but currently we have values somewhere between 67 and 75 uh, kilometers uh, mega per sec per kilometers, or let me turn that around, about 67 to 75 kilometers per second per mega per sec. And so knowing that value accurately, and we're kind of zooming it in, I think the current numbers are around 73. From that, we can figure out the distance to just about any galaxy. All we have to do is measure its recessional velocity. Now, of course, because of 
local interaction, gravitational interaction between galaxies, like for example near the Virgo cluster, the Hubble law is not a good method because of the other motion that occurs due because of gravity, but in general throughout most of the universe, using the Hubble constant is a pretty good method for large distances to galaxies. So I would say the top three, Hubble law, Taipan A supernova, and Thule Fisher, and for the closer galaxies, the Cepheid variables are the three to four methods that are used to find distances to galaxies. But don't think that it's still, that it's an easy task. There's a lot of galaxies for which we know an approximate distance, and sometimes the uncertainty may be as much as 10 or 20 percent, because it's just indeed very difficult to get accurate values for these numbers. But that is how it's done, and here are the various means by which it's done.